Hi, my name is Stephanie and I'm a PhD student from the University of Sydney. Today I'll be presenting Visualising Invisible Disability Inclusion as a way to improve disability inclusion in Australian health media campaigns. In my presentation today, I'll be outlining the current state of public health when it comes to disability inclusion, with a specific focus on Australian public health media campaigns and the representation of people with disability. I'll be specifically focusing on social media as various public health researchers have noted that social media will be an important part of the future of these campaigns. I'll be drawing on work from my PhD which looks at the Instagram pages of two Australian obesity prevention media campaigns, namely the National 2016 Girls Make Your Move campaign and the New South Wales 2015 Healthy Eating Active Living campaign. I'll be suggesting that by considering the inclusion and representation of people with invisible disability, not only do we get a broadened understanding of inclusion, but we also it also encourages us to adopt a more empathetic approach to health communications that better accounts for the fluctuating nature of health. Before I begin, I'd like to briefly define invisible disability as any ongoing health condition, illness and or impairment that isn't immediately visually observable in the majority of a person's everyday life. To this end, the study of invisible disability requires a broadened understanding of disability that goes further into the territory of ill health than most traditional understandings of disability. To begin, I'll briefly outline some of the key tensions between the field of public health and disability inclusion as it provides necessary context. When it comes to the field of public health, it's greatly at odds with the inclusion of people with disability and has often been contended to foster compulsory able-bodiedness. The field aims to promote health and prevent diseases and disabilities. It prioritises the health of populations, even if it comes at the cost of individuals. Needless to say, these key tenets come greatly at odds with the inclusion of people with disability, whom are rarely seen as target populations, even though they often represent significant and high-risk populations when it comes to the health concerns being addressed. And this is also the case for obesity prevention. On the flip side, however, it is admit admittedly quite a difficult task to properly account for the diversity of the disability identity when it comes to broad approaches. So I think this hints at two key questions that underlies a lot of the representational issues that I'll be talking about today. Firstly, why are people with disability not seen as a target population when it comes to these population health approaches, such as public health media campaigns? And secondly, how do we properly ensure that people with disability are represented in a way that properly addresses the multiplicity and richness of the disability identity in such a broad approach? And these key questions are obviously very significant and have implications on citizenship. More specifically, when it comes to Australian public health media campaigns, people with disability often find themselves absent from representation or given very low representation in limiting ways, especially when compared to the statistic that an estimated one in six Australians or 18% of Australians have a disability. In my PhD, I looked at the representation of people with invisible and visible disability in two Australian obesity prevention campaigns via the content analyses of their Instagram pages. And what I found largely represented and reflected what a lot of the key literature says are the issues with the representation of people with disability in these campaigns. There were three key findings, so namely that one, people with disability were absent from representation. Two, people with disability were tokenistically represented. Or three, people with disability were represented as the opposite of healthy and often used as the fear part in fear appeals. To illustrate these trends and also how adopting an invisible disability perspective can broaden our understanding of inclusion, I'll just briefly go through some of my results now. So when it came to the Girls Make Your Move campaign, this campaign overtly branded itself as an inclusive and diverse campaign. The Girls Make Your Move campaign was run by the Australian Department of Health from 2016 to 2019. It was aimed to inspire young Australian females aged 19 to 24 to engage in more physical activity. Although the campaign didn't state that females with disability were a specific target audience, the campaign did paint itself as an inclusive and diverse campaign that aimed to inspire all females regardless of ethnicity, size or ability. It was also predominantly run on social media, namely Instagram and Facebook.
In brief, I examined all 1,214 image-based posts on the Instagram page. I was particularly interested in the representation of females with invisible and visible disability since the campaign was aimed at females. What I found was that a total of 3,528 females were visually represented, 70 of whom had disability, 45 of whom had visible disability, and 25 of whom had invisible disability. Beyond the low representation of females with disability, what else was concerning was that the majority of females with visible disability who were represented reflected the dominant imagining of people with disability, that is, they were females in wheelchairs. In fact, Izzy here on screen was the most represented female with disability across the campaign, appearing in a total of 19 posts. So speaking to the trends that I outlined earlier, the disability representation felt very tokenistic in that it didn't reflect the diversity of the disability identity or the commonality of invisible disability, which makes up an estimated 90% of all disability. To this end, the lack of invisible disability representation perhaps prompts us to ask whether people with disability would have at all been represented had the campaign not claimed to be diverse and inclusive. Conversely, the Healthy Eating Active Living campaign didn't claim to be diverse or inclusive. The Obesity Prevention Campaign, which is run by the New South Wales Government, has been active since 2015, albeit under the name Make Healthy Normal. Nonetheless, the campaign's key aims haven't changed too much, with them remaining strongly linked to supporting a healthy community in New South Wales and reducing the impact of lifestyle-related chronic disease. It's gone through various stages with different target audiences, and like the Girls Make Your Move campaign, it has never been aimed specifically at a target audience of people with disability. However, at one point it was aimed at all adults in New South Wales. At the time of data collection, it had 570 Instagram posts. And again, I was interested in the representation of people with invisible and visible disability. What I found was a total of three people out of 647 people visually represented in the campaign had disability, all of whom had invisible disability. However, there was one post that textually represented visible disability via the captions and hashtags and 28 posts that textually represented invisible disabilities. All the disabilities represented were also chronic diseases. In line with the trends that I noted earlier, 28 out of the 31 posts that textually and or visually represented invisible disability medically framed people with invisible disability as the opposite of healthy. Interestingly, what else this campaign did was in a bid to avoid using fat people to create fear appeals to motivate behaviour change, which is very problematic, they instead used people with chronic diseases. For example, in the post on screen, the infographic reads, inactive men are 60% more likely to suffer from depression. The infographic takes a reductionist approach that medically frames depression, which can have damaging implications. As part of my study, I've also been interviewing people with invisible disability, and some of the things they've noted about this post has hinted at the possible damaging effects that this messaging can have. For example, one interviewee said, it sort of a little bit feels like it's like saying if you have like depression, it's your fault because you're not active. Another interviewee said, a bit tone deaf, particularly from someone who is depressed or has depression. I'm sure a lot of these men would love to be active, but depression is exhaustive. Like it's very exhausting. And again, I think reductionist is the easiest way to explain that post and how it's a bit uncomfortable. This shows how adopting an invisible disability perspective can offer us a different understanding of inclusion and a more expansive understanding of how compulsory able-bodiedness operates to create damaging health messages. Finally, I'd like to share the more recent results of my study in which I asked people with invisible disability to create their own obesity prevention Instagram posts, some of which I've put up on screen. The reason I'd like to share these posts is because I think it nicely sums up another key advantage of adopting an invisible disability perspective in health communications, which is that it encourages more empathetic approaches to health communications, which include being nice to yourself and not expecting your health to remain stable every single day because health isn't a monolithic concept. This more inclusive approach to health messaging also makes sure that it better accommodates for people with disability and people with fluctuating health. Accordingly, I think that it could also be a more productive way forward when it comes to the future of public health campaigns.
Thank you.